Hi, it's Tom here, and welcome to this video all about deploying Jenkins into AWS ECS, the Elastic Container Service. And I'm really excited you're joining me for this video because we're going to go all the way with Jenkins to make sure it's highly available, it's secure, it's got persistent storage for all those jobs you're going to be running, and it's also reproducible using templating. And because we're deploying into the AWS cloud, all of these requirements can be easily met at the click of a button. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to deploy Jenkins into your own AWS account using a template that we'll be running through. So let's get right into it. And what better way could there be to start a video about Jenkins than talking about Jenkins? And as I'm sure you know, Jenkins is a continuous integration service that basically allows you to set it up so that when you commit code, it checks out that code, it builds that code, it tests it potentially, and also deploys it into different environments. And this is kind of the standard setup, but actually you can pretty well configure Jenkins to do whatever you want. I mean, there's all types of Jenkins. There's a beer guzzling Jenkins. There's an evil dictator Jenkins. There's angry Jenkins. And there's also my favorite Jenkins, Punkins. Joking aside though, Jenkins is a pretty flexible tool. And I think that's why it's remained so popular over the years. But let's have a quick look at the Jenkins architecture. And the main Jenkins service is this blue box here, which is called the Jenkins master. And that's a service that we can run inside a Docker container. And it's responsible for serving up the web UI and also for storing configuration and data on the file system and also for running jobs. So when you commit code, it's going to go and check it out and do all the testing and all that kind of stuff. And lastly here, it's responsible for orchestrating what are called Jenkins slaves. Now, we're not going to cover this in this video, but just quickly, Jenkins slaves are other containers that you can run that also run Jenkins jobs to take the workload off of the Jenkins master. And one important caveat of this setup is that actually you can only run a single Jenkins master at one time, and this is recommended in the Jenkins documentation. And actually, because the Jenkins master is reading and writing to a file system, if you were to run multiple Jenkins masters, you could potentially have some file corruption. So that is an important limitation that we can only run that single Jenkins master. And you might be wondering, well, how can we achieve high availability? And ECS offers some things that help us get around that. And we'll be getting onto that shortly. So now that we've spoken about Jenkins a little bit, the next question is, given all these constraints, then why is ECS a good solution for us to deploy Jenkins into AWS? And just a very quick background on ECS, and you probably know this already, but ECS is a container orchestration framework and similar in a way to its better known and more fashionable cousin Kubernetes. It kind of provides you everything you need to deploy Docker containers and manages things like scaling, failover, networking, and security. And ECS consists of these different resources. And at the lowest level here, we've got what's called the ECS task, which is a unit of execution within ECS. And it pretty well equates to a Docker container running a single instance of your application. And then just above that, we've got the service, which is a bit of an orchestration layer. And you have one of these for each application that you want to deploy, for example, Jenkins. And it manages the ECS tasks for you, making sure that the desired number of tasks are running and handles things like security and networking. And above this still, we've got the ECS cluster, which is a grouping of tasks and services. And there's two ways that you can deploy ECS tasks into a cluster. First up, you can create your own group of EC2 instances and you manage that and the ECS tasks get deployed onto these EC2 instances. But there's another way which is called Fargate. It's a launch type of Fargate. And that means that basically AWS is managing and provisioning all those EC2 instances for you. And you don't have to worry about that. And it's a lot simpler. And that's what we'll be using in this video example. And another thing to mention here is that the ECS service will automatically register itself into the application load balancer. And technically, that means that all the different IP addresses of all the different ECS tasks in your service will get registered into a target group in the application load balancer. So that's another thing that we don't have to worry about with ECS. So hopefully you agree that ECS sounds like quite a nice technology to use. But what attributes does it have that make it good for our solution for Jenkins? 
given the constraints that we talked about earlier? Well, first up, of course, it integrates with the application load balancer, like I've just said, and this means that we can expose Jenkins to the internet over HTTPS, and we can also attach an SSL certificate into our load balancer so that it's all secured properly. And much like other AWS services, ECS offers integration with security groups, which allows us to limit inbound and outbound traffic. And of course, Jenkins by default is deployed on port 8080, so we can limit access from the ALB to Jenkins to 8080, and we'll provide full outbound traffic so that Jenkins can do all of those updates, download plugins and all that kind of stuff. And as I mentioned before, persistent storage is very important for the Jenkins master to store all of its config and data. And fortunately, when we're deploying into AWS Fargate, we can use the Elastic File System EFS service. And this means that all of the Jenkins data will be kept safe. And if the container has to get restarted for whatever reason, then the EFS volume will just get reattached, no problems, and we can continue from where we left off. And in terms of failover, our Jenkins service can only run a single master. So what happens then if the availability zone on which that master is running goes down? Well, fortunately in ECS, when you create an ECS service, you can have it span multiple availability zones. And that means if an availability zone does go down, then the service will get recreated in the other availability zone. And that's gonna give us automatic failover in that scenario. And if you're not sure what some of these terms like availability zones, regions, subnets, and all that kind of stuff is, you can watch this other video here, which goes into a lot of detail on the fundamentals that you need to know about AWS in order to deploy container workloads. And in the example for this video, we'll be creating all the resources that you see in this diagram here. And we'll be doing that using the templating language CloudFormation, which is the YAML syntax and it will be split into two different CloudFormation templates. And the first one is for all the underlying networking resources like the VPCs, availability zones and subnets, um, and also things like NAT gateways and internet gateways to allow us to actually deploy ECS services. And I'm not gonna go into details of that CloudFormation stack because I've got another video that's specifically about that and we're using the same CloudFormation template from that video. And the second CloudFormation template is where we build on top of the first and we create all the ECS and Jenkins specific resources. And this of course includes things like the ECS cluster, the ECS service and the ECS task definition for Jenkins as well as things like roles and security groups, and of course, the EFS volume that we need to store Jenkins data. And this also creates a load balancer and a load balancer listener, and that's gonna enable us to open up Jenkins to the internet on HTTPS. And once again, I'm not gonna go into minute detail on this CloudFormation template, but if you do want that level of detail, you can jump over to the accompanying article, which I'll link to in the description, and that covers each CloudFormation resource in a lot more detail. And just before I show you how to apply this CloudFormation template, I just want to mention a few prerequisites before you apply this yourself. And first up, it's kind of obvious, but you do need an AWS account. And secondly, you're going to need to set up a certificate which we input into the CloudFormation template. And this is something that you can set up separately because it's gonna be specific to whatever domain you want to serve Jenkins from. So in my case, I want to serve Jenkins from jenkins.tomgregory.com. So actually I've created a certificate for star.tomgregory.com. And lastly here, if you want to serve Jenkins from a specific domain, you need to register a domain with a domain provider, whether that's AWS or somebody else. And this isn't strictly necessary because you can just use the domain name that's provided for your ALB, but you will get a certificate warning. So in my case, I've got the domain tomgregory.com and what we'll be doing later is setting this up so that jenkins.tomgregory.com points to the ALB. And just to show you what I mean, we can go to console.aws.amazon.com and I'm just going to sign in to my account here. And if we go to services and certificate manager, 
you can see that I've got a certificate here for star.tomgregory.com. And if you want to serve your Jenkins instance from a specific domain, you can go ahead and create a certificate for that domain. And you'll have to go through the validation process, which includes adding a DNS record. But once you've done that, you'll just need the ARN of the certificate, which you can find down here. And you'll see shortly how that gets inputted into the CloudFormation template. So when you're ready, you can just go and click on the launch stack link in the description of this video. And that will take you to a page inside your AWS account, which looks like this. It's the CloudFormation area create stack page. And you can see here that we're linking to a specific CloudFormation template that I've got stored in my account in S3. And of course, you can go ahead and download that CloudFormation template yourself and have a look at exactly what's in there. But right now, we'll just click on Next. And here we're asked to input some parameters. So the stack name default is Jenkins for ECS. We'll leave that as it is. And certificate ARN. So I just showed you how you can create a certificate in AWS Certificate Manager. And here we just need to paste in the ARN of that certificate because it's going to get attached to the load balancer listener. So I'll just paste that in and hit next again. And then there's all sorts of other options, but we don't really need to worry about that. We can just accept all the defaults. And then on the last page here, I've got to tick these boxes for a couple of special permissions because this stack actually creates IAM resources, which is identity and access management. So it kind of creates things like roles that you need to give this extra permissions for. And now we just hit create stack. And now we've got a new CloudFormation stack, which is in the create in progress state. And this will take around five minutes to create. So we'll just hold on for a second here. And now that's completed and it actually took more like 10 minutes than five minutes, but oh well, can't complain too much because it's created a whole load of stuff for us. And if we click on resources here, we can see all of the things that have been created by this template. Uh, we've got the cluster, We've got the Jenkins service here and the Jenkins task definition, as well as all these other things. And you can go and have a look at that when it's created. One other thing to note on the left here, you can see that we've got uh, not only Jenkins for ECS stack, we've got another stack above this and it says nested Jenkins for ECS VPC stack. And this is the second stack that I mentioned before, which creates all the networking resources. So if we clicked on this and looked at resources, you can see all the things like, well, down here, we've got the VPC, we've got the public subnets, private subnets, and then things like NAT gateways and internet gateways. So once again, you can go and take a look at those as well, if you like. So now we'll go to services here and just type ECS and we'll go and have a look at our running Jenkins service. So we've got our cluster called default cluster. And in here we've got the service, service name Jenkins. This is the orchestration part, which is making sure that all of our Jenkins containers are running. And you can see here, we've got a desired count of one. And that means that we need to have one task running at one time. And if we click on tasks, we can see that yes, we do have one Jenkins task running. We click on that. We can see down here that it's got a container which is running the Jenkins slash Jenkins LTS Docker image. So that's perfect. And we can also have a look at the logs here. And in the logs, we've got the default Jenkins output for when it first starts up. And importantly, this includes this part here. It says, please use the following password to proceed to installation. So I'm actually going to copy this password because I'll need it in a minute when we log in to Jenkins. And if we just go back to the service, there's one other important thing to see, which is our load balancing section. And it's saying that it's basically registering into this Jenkins target group that gets created by the CloudFormation template. And if we click on that target group, 
we can see that it's targeting port 8080. And it says here it's attached to this specific load balancer. So if we go into this load balancer, we ha we've actually got here a DNS name to access the load balancer. So I, I can copy this and then I can go ahead and access that and we should see Jenkins. And I actually need to remember to access it on HTTPS. Remember to put in the HTTPS here. And now I've got a big fat warning which says the certificate is invalid basically. And this is because the certificate is created for star.tomgregory.com and yours will be whatever you've set it up for. And this URL we're accessing is not within that domain. But of course you can say here advanced, proceed, happy to proceed anyway. And now we're in Jenkins. So that's very cool. We've got Jenkins up and running. But unfortunately, we've got this insecure certificate problem. So you can carry on like this if you like in your own stack, or you can take the DNS record and then you can log in to your DNS provider and set up a CNAME record. So in my case, my DNS provider is Google. So I can go into Google and I can add a custom record for my domain. So I just need to add a CNAME record. And in here, I put in Jenkins. So when I go to jenkins.tomgregory.com, it's got a CNAME record. And the value for that is the DNS name for the load balancer. And that's been added here. And that will take a little bit of time to propagate. So I've actually had to wait around half an hour before this DNS change has propagated. But now we can go from using the ALB DNS and I can go to https jenkins.tomgregory.com and now you can see that everything is secure because the certificate is correct for this domain. And all we need to do now is just enter that admin password, the one that I copied earlier, and we'll be off and away into the Jenkins setup wizard. And this is where I'm going to stop here because this is getting into customizing Jenkins, which I think we're going to be covering in future videos. And when you're done with this example, don't forget to go and delete this stack to avoid unnecessary charges. And you can do that really easily by just going to CloudFormation and selecting the stack Jenkins for ECS and hitting the delete button here. And that will delete the parent stack and also the nested stack. So all those resources will be gone. And just as a reminder, please remember that this CloudFormation template is an example of a production ready stack. And if you want to apply something like this to your own production environment, then you need to do things like making a copy of this template and adjusting it as necessary for your own VPCs and subnets and potentially setting up log retention and automated backups of the EFS volume. And also maybe limiting access to Jenkins by IP if you need to. So even though we've gone a long way to get Jenkins up and ready to start processing jobs, there's still a few missing pieces here. And don't worry, because this isn't the end of the road. And in, in future videos, we're going to be covering things like how to run jobs on Jenkins slaves in AWS ECS, how to auto-provision Jenkins configuration with no UI setup required, and also how to provision Jenkins jobs and pipelines required for your organization. And if you are interested in these future topics, I'd really appreciate if you could put a comment down below to encourage me to, to make these videos. And if you've got any requests or also feedback on this video, I'd really appreciate your opinion and I'd love to hear your comments down there. So thanks a lot for watching. Please give it a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in another episode on Tom Gregory Tech.